All right, good morning or afternoon. This is UL Trades, and today is my trade recap for Monday, July 24th. I did take three days off last week. I only traded Monday, Tuesday last week, and for three days I went with a youth group um, to a summer camp and was an adult chaperone basically for a few days. So it was nice to get away and, um, uh, you know, get out in the fresh air and reset a little bit. It was actually quite, quite nice. Um, didn't get a lot of sleep because kids don't sleep when they're, when they're sleeping in tents apparently. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. So we're back at it today. Uh, today I actually have only had one trade and it happened very early this morning. It's only 1230 in the afternoon central time. Um, the one trade that I took hit. And so, um, I took off and I went, uh, bowling. Um, our local bowling alley has $1 games until noon. So I took advantage of that as my reward for, uh, following my plan today. So I don't think I'll take any more trades today. If something really, really good sets up, I might, um, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it, but I, I doubt it. It would have to be, um, it would have to be a setup that just slaps you in the face uh, for me to take it. So let's just go over it real quick. Here is the p and for today. Uh, so a change in my strategy a little bit today in terms of my position sizing because the last two days um, were not good days. Uh, and so I lost some ground. My trailing stop has is getting uncomfortably close. And so I only did one contract in all my accounts, uh, just to keep it simple. Um, what I'm looking for is to get maybe one or two more one contract trades just to get that balance up a little bit. And then, uh, I think I'll go to two contracts. Um, but we'll, we'll see how it plays out. So we're back going in the right direction. It's very encouraging. So, um, if you're not, if you haven't followed along to this point, I'm in the process of working to get 20 Apex accounts funded. I have 11 $50,000 accounts and nine $25,000 accounts. Um, I'm basically, I'm still a little bit behind, uh, what, $320 or so behind in the $50,000 accounts. Um, and I'm right at break even basically on the $25,000 accounts. Uh, so, um, that's where we're at. Made $196 after commissions today on the single trade. And we'll look at that here in a second. And uh, I guess that's all I have to say about that. So let's look at the trade. One of the things I'm looking at uh, is, oh, here, let me get rid of this. I turned off my chart trader, so now it shows, shows the entry with all this nonsense. So let me get rid of that real fast. Sorry, I should have done this ahead of time but it is what it is. Sorry. I hate that. I hate that term. It is what it is. Um, I don't know why I keep saying it. Okay. So here we were this morning, what I'm looking for, and this is based on the advice of my YouTube mentor, um, Bob Anderson gives away his information for free on YouTube. You should check out his YouTube channel, the trading journey of Robert Anderson. Um, it's his plan that I'm following and uh, I mean, it works. So uh, what he suggests is focusing primarily on this 21 SMA, this five minute 21 SMA, uh, which tends to, according to him, react better when the market is slower. And right now at summertime, volume is is low. And so uh, he, he's looking, his advice is that the higher probability trades are off of that line. So that's really what I'm looking for. And so we came into the day, um, you know, pre-market, it was just kind of flat. It wasn't really going anywhere. There hadn't been a lot of movement, um, other than uh, earlier in the day. All right. So very early this morning, we pushed past the overnight open, uh, popped up a little bit and, uh, brought us to the open at, eight o'clock central time. Price comes up. Uh, we're above both, both moving averages. Uh, price comes up. It does react here. And honestly, I didn't even have, I didn't even have this one on my chart when I took this trade. 
uh, because I didn't want to confuse myself. Okay, so I just had it turned off. Really, so I could just look at what it was that I wanted to trade off of. Okay, so we have, it comes down. I mean, there is the potential for this um, one minute 90 MA. I mean, we have a nice reaction off of it, but that's not what I'm looking for. So I wait, it breaks through the opening range. It comes back. First of all, I would never take this opening range trade because it goes right into this moving average. Um, and uh, my, my back testing has shown me that Taking a trade into this moving average is not not wise, especially when you're going in the opposite direction. Um, in other words, when um, if you're trading on the top side of this of this 21 SMA, you're really only looking to go long. If you're trading off the bottom side, you're really only looking to go short. So trading off of the opening range into the 21 SMA would be looking to go short across uh, this line, which is a riskier trade. You see it pulls back and it does push down a little bit, uh, but it does come back to retest. That is where I got in. So what I was looking at was we, we crossed over the 21 SMA. We come back for a retest. It is, I mean, it's a small crossover and we'll look at another one that doesn't qualify in my view, uh, but this one does. You see, we have one, two, three candles that clearly pull away from the line, right? They're not touching the line. They're not riding the line. It does pull away. Even though it's fairly flat, it pulls away. It comes up for a retest. Um, I look at this as a retest, both of the 21 SMA as well as the opening range box. So in my mind, that's kind of two, you know, forms of confluence. In addition, we're, we're on the bottom or we're underneath the one minute nine, which is just an additional, uh, sort of confirmation. So I get in at the break of uh, the, this candle right here. So I had my order sitting here. I got in as soon as uh, the price moved down here. And it was, I'll admit, this was a tough one. Um, I almost got out of this early because I'm, I've am i got such a tight limit right now on my accounts that I'm very, <laughs> I'm very nervous. Um, but I held to the strategy. So, you know, we went you know, one, two, three, four candles before we finally broke down. I never did come close to the stop loss. Um, I got in here at 63. So the stop loss was at 73. Um, so this one came, you know, two ticks away from, I thought, Oh, here we go. But it did pull back. Um, so it worked out and push down. Here's 20 ticks sold at my target. Um, it did go for another, went for a total of, I think, well, it went from 23 up to 63. So what's that? 40. I went for a total of 40 ticks. Um, but I sold out at my profit target, which means I didn't, I didn't lose any trailing stop on this trade. I moved my balance up. That was a win. Um, at this point I, I turned my attention to my spy charts to trade over there. Had a good spy trade this morning. So I was happy with that. However, in the middle of that price comes back above, above the 21 SMA. We got separation, right? Another one, two, three candles above. So we have a gap. It's very small, but we have a gap. It tests it. If I was watching this, I 100% would have got in this trade because, again, we have the same three levels of confluence, but going the other direction. So we have our 21 SMA. We have our, we're on the right side, the correct side to go long. We're on the top side of the 21 SMA. We're on the top side of the one or the nine, uh, the one minute 90 MA and price pushes all the way up across the box. And I think I've mentioned that before is when price tests one side of the opening range, it almost always, almost always <laughs> goes back to the other side. Um, so I'd like to say if I'd have seen this, I would have put my profit target at the opposite end. Um, but regardless, it would have hit 20 ticks and I would have, that would have been great. Been a great trade. Um, and that was it. After that, it just kind of chopped around here. Um, again, I was only looking at this, this red line right here. That was the only thing I was waiting for. So I left to go play me some, to go bowl a couple games. Um, it never comes back to it. Um, and it looks like right now is the first touch back after it crossed. Um, so I wanted to show you where I, 
this could potentially fake you out. Now, I don't know. Um, I'll tell you why I would not have taken this trade. Um, and then you can go back and uh, do some back testing yourself maybe and see what you think. But this is why I would not have taken this trade because we do cross the 21 SMA. All right. And it does come back up to test, but you see that, see that it fails. Uh, there's no follow through before it continues up. Um, the reason I wouldn't have is, is this, this candle crosses, but this candle only is one tick away from the moving average. And then this one goes right back to it. So this is really all happening on the line. Um, we never really have a pullback. So even though earlier, the earlier examples I showed you, it, it was a fairly small pullback. Um, it was still a pullback. Uh, of a couple of candles. And so price did pull back before it came back to it um, for a rejection. So that's why I would not have been suckered into taking this guy. I mean, you could have gotten a couple ticks out of it maybe. Um, but if your target was 20 and your stop was 10, you would have got stopped out. That would not have, not have worked. Okay. And uh, that's all we got. I think, I mean, just right now it looks like this might even be a good entry opportunity right here. And to 23, it's only 10 ticks. Um, so when I, when I look at these, I like to see a little more, more gap. I mean, unless, unless we've created like a new high before we came back to the red line and rejected. Um, I mean, if you look at this and you said, well, this is a high and we come down and you kind of look at this group of candles and say, well, this was the retest before it came off. I mean, you've got some space, right? From 02 up to 17, there's a little bit of room there. Um, but this one does not give me that level of confidence. Um, it might, it might pop here and, and just keep running. And if you look at the higher time frames, um, I like to, I like to look at the one-hour chart. Um, if we go back, we're we're hovering right above this line right now, um, and so this this line right here is this guy here. And these are just basic support and resistance lines. Um, so I'm not sure what it's going to do up in here. Uh, but last time we came up under here, we tried to push through and failed. Um, so I'm expecting, you know, it's probably either going to reject hard or it's going to just kind of fly through it. Um, whichever, whichever of those directions I anticipate, it'll probably go the other way. Um, so I'm a little cautious there. So this you can see right now we're, we're starting to reject it. Um, now oh, here's a strong push through. So what we'd look through, look for here is it would really be nice if it pulls down below this level for a retest up and a bounce back. If it does that, I will take that trade, um, and maybe get a couple more dollars, but we'll see. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll fill you in tomorrow on, on how that all works out. So hopefully you followed your plan today. I hope uh, you had success. You found, um, you know, your piece of what the market had available to you. Um, if you're interested in continuing to see how this saga progresses and see if I ever get these things funded, uh, feel free and subscribe. Uh, like the video if you have any questions. Uh, feel free and comment, and um, I'll do what I can to answer those to the best of my ability or point you, uh, probably more than likely, point you in the direction of somebody more experienced than myself to answer those questions for you. Um, but we're here to help. And until next time, uh, trade safe and follow your plan, uh, and we'll talk at you tomorrow. Bye-bye.